Coach Corey Wayne, and this is my video coaching newsletter. And the topic of today's newsletter is going to be, She's Afraid She Might Hurt Me. Well, I've got an email here from a guy who's been dating his coworker for about two months. And apparently, I guess everybody at the office has found out that they're dating, and she doesn't like the fact that people know that they're dating, because everybody obviously seems to have a comment about it, especially when people go out for happy hour and drinks and things of that nature. So he's been dating her for about two months. She tried to friend zone him one time, which obviously he did the right thing and said, I'm not interested in that, which actually caused her to start pursuing him. She stayed over at his house like four times already, but every time he he, he basically says he grabs her. I'm assuming he just grabs her between the legs. And I guess that's his way of saying, hey, I'm ready for sexy time. And of course she gives him an excuse. So he hasn't sealed the deal. She's trying to keep everything in the down low. She keeps talking about how she's not ready for a relationship and she's worried that things might not work out. And if things don't work out, she's afraid she may hurt him. Obviously, when a woman says something like that, what she's basically saying is, I can tell that you're way more into me than I'm into you. And more than likely, if you keep doing what you're doing, eventually I'm going to dump you and I'm going to break your heart. And I feel bad about that and I feel guilty about that. But what's a girl to do? So I have a quote that I wrote on this topic. And I'll go through his email and and see what we can do to help him turn things around, finally seal the deal and get her to the point where she wants to have a relationship and is actually proud of everybody knowing that she's dating him because it doesn't sound like that at all, especially after two months of dating. And he says he's been following me. He doesn't say how long but obviously you can tell he doesn't know the fundamentals yet. So the quote that I wrote says most men do not understand that women fall in love slowly over time they also fall out of love slowly over time once a woman falls out of love with a guy it will take time for her to fall back in love with him provided he does more things right than wrong men also mistakenly assume that they can force or rush women into a relationship or commitment by pleading trying to prove their worthiness stating their case and generally trying to use logic and reason to talk women into loving them. Smart men focus on hanging out, having fun, and hooking up on dates, and leave the relationship labels and commitments to women to bring up when they are ready. They also let women come to them at their own pace and do most, if not all, of the chasing. Women usually will only start chasing and pursuing guys after about two to three weeks of dating where men pursue and initiate contact in the beginning. Once women start pursuing, then guys can simply back off, wait to hear from them, and make the next date when they do. This way, women dictate the pace and seriousness of the relationship so it's their idea, and guys never have to worry about being too pushy, over-pursuing, or getting friend-zoned. And if you guys haven't figured it out yet women are the ones that dictate the pace in a relationship they're the ones that do the choosing they decide whether or not they're going to have a relationship with somebody but when you turn on every fucking movie and television show you see the exact opposite you have to kind of go back to movies from 30 40 50 60 years ago to see the normal natural dynamic and play a great example old school movie it's a wonderful life I think that was 41, 42, something like that came out. But that's a, a great movie where you see Jimmy Stewart's character and Donna Reed. They grow up in this little city. She's like the younger sister of one of his friends. I and mean, she always kind of had a little crush on him when she was a little girl. And he didn't really pay her much attention. He didn't even notice that she all, her eyes lit up like a firefly as his mother, the one, woman who played his mother – said in the uh, in the movie and then he goes to a dance at the high school because back then you know a small town high school was a big thing everybody went to the football games because that was that was the source of entertainment and so there's this big dance during uh during the end of the football season i guess and he's there and they start hanging out and he's like wow i forgot how beautiful this woman was then of course his you know right in the middle of this as he's about to kiss her bunch of friends show up hey your dad's had a heart attack he hops in the car and they leave and then she goes off to college and then comes home for college a few years later and they run into each other again and that connection is there but the interesting thing that you see 
in that movie and it's a great archetype because Jimmy Stewart, he's focused on his mission. He's focused on his purpose. He's saving his money up and he's going to travel the world and as he says, he's going to shake the dust of this little crummy town off his shoes and go where he wants. But, but, she has other plans. So she kind of spins this web, gets her other people in the neighborhood to help her out and they just like everybody kind of corrals Jimmy Stewart, George Bailey is the character's name that he plays towards spending time. Oh, why don't you go call on her? So he goes down there and she knows he's on his way and she's got a rec- you know, music already. It was the same song they had played like four years before at the uh, – at the th- you know at when they had fa- when they almost kissed when his dad ended up having a heart attack and so there's all these things that are happening in his life and he never can leave the town there's always something else going on and so they you know they hang out and he's like I'm not interested in nesting or having a family or I'm not interested in this at all and she just you know he's like I'm gonna go do my own thing I'm gonna travel the world screw this little town as soon as my brother gets back. I'm going to go off to college and I'm going to see the world. That's my plan. Obviously, life intervenes and she starts to tear up. And obviously, he kisses her and they live happily ever after. But what you see in that movie is it's her idea. She's the one doing the pursuing. And if you think about it, it makes total sense because feminine energy is about opening up to receive love. It's about bonding. It's about connecting. It's about nurturing. It's about relationships, it's about dating labels, all those things. And every a woman, woman, women in general, they're physically designed to receive a man who puts all the war paint on and the tight-fitting clothes. Women do. Why? Because women know that us guys are visual creatures. And once they get our attention, they reel us in for what it is that they want. I mean, how can you resist those beautiful eyes and the boobs and the body and all that charm and the sweetness? But you don't see that today. You see the exact opposite. You see men acting the way women used to act in movies and vice versa. Women act indifferent like they don't care and the guys are groveling and begging. And When you grow up and you see this over and over and over in just about every program that you turn on, you can't help but be brainwashed by that. And especially if you grow up in an an unhealthy family where there's not a healthy relationship going on and there's no – good healthy archetypes to emulate and you're watching this stuff on TV all the time from the time you're a little boy or a little girl until you get to be an adult, it totally screws up the dynamics. It totally screws up the sexual polarity. That's why women are always going, where the hell are all the guys at? They're either married or they're gay. All the good ones. That's that's what happens. You, You brainwash a society like that and it's just, it creates a hell of a fucking mess. So let's go through his email. So let me, let me get back to the quote here and, and finish going through that. They also let women come to them at their own pace and do most if not all the chasing. Women will only start chasing and pursuing guys after two to three weeks of dating where men pursue and initiate contact in the beginning. Once women start pursuing, then guys can simply back off, wait to hear from them and make the next date when they do. This way, women dictate the pace and seriousness of the relationship so it's their idea. And guys never have to worry about being too pushy, over-pursuing or getting friend-zoned. That's such an important point. All my phone sessions that I had today were guys that were in a process of trying to get an ex back or somebody that they had over-pursued because they had seen too many movies. And all these guys, they had, most of them, had, I think the – there was only one guy that read the book two times. Everybody else was like two, three, four times. And it was amazing because they were already involved with these women. They are emotionally involved and it's really hard to do the right thing when you're emotionally involved with someone. That's why I see the same things over and over because it's like you have to. You've got to cover the fundamentals. It's the only way people get this. And even though they might read the book – because of their belief system and because they're emotionally wrapped up, it's like they can hear something like that and it's like it just doesn't register. Remember, people will act consistently with who they view themselves to be, whether that view is accurate or not. 
So if they have a belief system and a way that they perceive themselves and they learn one of these, something like this from me, it's hard to reconcile that. And so therefore, it just gets dismissed out of hand. And a lot of what I do in my phone sessions with clients is shake them and point these things out where their thinking is flawed and then they go, oh, okay, now I see, now it makes sense. So he says, hey coach, I recently learned about you and man, I've got to say thank you. You've helped me to see what I've been doing wrong in my past few relationships and how afraid I have been getting, I have been of getting cheated on or left for someone else. So what does that tell me about how he views himself? Doesn't think he's worthy, doesn't think he's much of a catch. It's the kind of guy that thinks I, it's like some kind of trick to get a woman to like me. I got to do something exceptional because I'm not very exceptional. And when you perceive yourself that way, it's going to cloud everything you do. If you don't think you're good enough, you don't think you measure up, if you don't think someone's going to love you or be faithful to you, you can be the best boyfriend in the world and do everything right. But if you're dating somebody that doesn't give a shit about loyalty and commitments and they don't mean anything or being faithful to them, first time you screw up, they're going to be fucking somebody else. That's just the way they are. Now you can do about it. You can't take it personally. That's the way they are. That's why it's so important when you're dating somebody new and they start telling you about their previous relationships, let them talk. Really? Oh. Oh, so you cheated on him. Oh, yeah, but he was just such a jerk and you know, he was just it was just I knew it wasn't going to go anywhere. I was like, "Oh, so why didn't you break up with him before hooking up with somebody else?" You hear those things when a woman starts telling you you're out on a first or a second or a third date and she's telling you cheated on this guy, cheated on that guy and the guy goes, oh, but her boobs are so nice and her butt's amazing and those pretty eyes. It's like, I'm going to be different. I'm going to make things so good for her, she'll have no reason to cheat and that's what we tell ourselves because the boobs and the eye, the eyelashes and the eyeliner and the butt and the tight clothes. We get hypnotized by that. He says, as you say, the more you fear it, then it will become a self-fulfilling prophecy. I'm dating a coworker and everything was going great until it got around the office that we were dating. Well, there's only one way that that happened. Either you opened that big hole in your face and started bragging about it to other people. Maybe because you're, if you're afraid of getting cheated on or that you're going to lose her to somebody else, it's like you're kind of marking your territory. It's like whipping your dick out and pissing around your your desk and the office to, and around her desk to metaphorically to put your scent out to warn everybody, keep everybody else away. Gentlemen, don't kiss and tell. The old Indian proverb, if tribe not to know, keep mouth shut. It's a good one. It, it, you're going to see here when I get to it, it's counterproductive that now everybody knows that they're dating. She doesn't like it. She's not comfortable with it, partly because her interest is low. So and now if the woman talks about it, well, there's nothing you can do. But the worst thing you can do is start dating somebody in your office or your small social circle and then you start bragging to your friends about it and she's trying to keep it on the down low. She's going to know that you couldn't keep your fucking mouth shut. And when a woman realizes a guy can't keep his mouth shut, she's going to watch what she tells him and she's going to start having second thoughts about being involved with him romantically. It's always best and I talk about this in my book, keep your mouth shut. It's nobody else's business. And if people go, hey, aren't you dating so-and-so? You go, what? I don't know what you're talking about. Come on. I heard – like you were out. I so, so-and-so saw you at dinner with her. Like what are you, the National Enquirer? Hey, how about them Yankees? Change the fucking subject. Don't answer their question. It's like what are you talking about? Dating her? I, I, really? Who said that? What? Well, you shouldn't believe everything you hear. She shared with me that it annoys her because she's new and because it feels like she is pressured to act a certain way at work so she's not looked upon as a hoe. Let me read that again. Because it feels like she is pressured to act a certain way at work so she's not looked upon as a hoe. What does that tell me? doesn't sound like she's interested in being with him exclusively and that she's a woman who's trying to keep her options open but people at work 
are making that a little difficult. That's telling. I don't want her to feel that way. As Mr. Nice Guy, oh, let me put her on her pet. Oh, I'm sorry, Your Highness, that you're going through this. this is so terrible. Oh, God. Let me buy you some chocolates. In fact, I'm trying to let her be free to come and go as she pleases. Well, try not. Either do or do not. There is no fucking try. That's what Master Yoda said. Empire Strikes Back. Very wise words. You got to love in such a way that the person you love feels free. She obviously doesn't feel free to come and go and also sounds like she's not interested in being committed and giving anybody the perception that the two of you are any kind of an item. Think about it. Would you rather have a woman who's like, of course we're dating. Yeah, he's a great guy. He's fucking awesome. I'll tell you, his dick is so big. Oh my God. It's not, it, I'll tell you what, it's a great ego boost when your girlfriend is bragging to her cousins and her sisters and her girlfriends about how great you are in bed. And then they're all looking at you giggling. You're like, like, what are you guys all laughing about? Oh, we were just talking about you in the bedroom. Oh, really? And they all giggle. I guess that's an interesting conversation. But gentlemen, don't kiss and tell. You ladies have a great time. And then you go about your business. But it makes you feel good. But this woman doesn't feel proud at all. It's like it's an inconvenience for her. She doesn't want to be seen as a hoe. Well, the only way she could be seen as a hoe is if she's flirting with other guys in your office or maybe other people that come in your office, maybe account executives from other companies or what have you. As an example, last night she went out with her girlfriends to a bar and our boss was there. She was talking to some of our coworkers and then started talking to two other guys. She wants to keep her options open. My boss was drunk and he kept saying, I'm going to tell him. I'm going to tell him. And it really upset her. It was the only reason for her to get upset. And that is she doesn't want to give you the impression that it's going anywhere relationship-wise, at least in her mind as of the, the moment that she said that. Remember, when a woman talks about how she feels, it only applies to that moment. Guys make the mistake of assuming that just – she said because she said I love you six months ago that it somehow applies today no it doesn't she loved you six months ago when she said it but she's telling you now she hates your guts and she wants a divorce or she doesn't want to be with you anymore or she's not in love with you anymore that's what she's feeling in the moment she tells me it pushes her away from wanting to be with me so I was wondering what I could do well she says something like that and say well you know what maybe you should stop gossiping about us because I sure as hell don't say anything about it We've been dating for about two months and I still haven't had sex with her and she slept in my bed four times. We make out and I grab and try for more. I grab and try for more? What is this, like bobbing for apples? I mean, digging your hand in a bag of Halloween candy? Come on, man. You need to read the fucking book, dude. There's a step-by-step -step seduction process in the book. You make out. You let your hands wander a little bit slowly. The pussy is like the last thing that you touch. Now, you may just gently caress it as your hand's moving up and down her inner thigh and you may graze her nipple just to see what she does. And if she just lays there and lets you do it, you can keep being a little bolder. But if she, you feel her starting to move her hand or her arm towards where you are, Move your hand somewhere else. Sensory acuity, man. It's about getting to the point where she's wound up sexually to where she can't take it anymore and she tears your clothes off and wants you inside her. Two steps forward, one step back. It's like she's laying in your bed and you start making out and you just go and you grab her boob or you grab her pussy or you just try to jam your hand down her pants. That's something a horny virgin teenager is going to do. It's not going to – that's not a successful seduction approach, my friend. How do I know? Well, you've been dating her for two months. She's sleeping over. She's in your bed and you're grabbing the grab bag. I remember as a kid growing up, I was like in elementary school. We used to have this fair like every year. They had rides and stuff and – they had this thing called the grab bag and you – I don't know how many tickets it was. But you put your hand in there. There could be candy in there. There could be a prize. 
sometimes there'd be things in there go zap your fingers or whatever. You know, there would literally be like a, a bag and you open the bag up and there's all kinds of shit in the bag. Sometimes it's just candy, sometimes it's little plastic garbage toys or whatever it was. But as a kid, you know, we thought it was great. I don't know why I just thought of that. I thought I'd share that with you. I haven't thought about that shit in fucking, oh, geez, that's like 35 years ago. Wow. He says, we make out and I grab for more, but she stops before it gets too far. Well, you encounter resistance and then you back off. Then a few minutes later, you take another run. It's just slowly wearing down her resistance. Again, this is detailed in the book. She's 21 and calls me every day and night. Good. Let her do 100% of the calling, texting, and pursuing and make dates when you do. Instead of being on the being available 24-7 and being her emotional tampon, you're acting like the friend. She tells me she's not ready for a relationship and brings it up after she feels annoyed at work from the teasing. That tells me that you're still pushing things. She can tell by the way you're interacting with her that you're way more into her than she is into you. I don't push it because it's her decision if she wants to be with me. She shared that she's worried that we might not work out because we are very different and she is afraid that she might hurt me. Again, that means that I know you're way more into me than I am into you. And more than likely because I've been on enough dates with enough people, enough guys in, in her case. you know, By the time she, she, a woman's 21, she's probably been on several dozen dates with guys and they all behave the same way. And she knows that every one of them, they push, she has to push away and break their heart. And she's just assuming that's going to happen with you because you're behaving just like them. And so women have learned over time. That's why they all say the same things. Oh, I'm not ready for a relationship. I'm confused about what I feel. There's no confusion. It's just low interest. She was trying to keep me as a friend at first. And I told her I'm not interested in friendship. So that's when she started pursuing me. Good. She should be doing 100% of it. Make dates that can lead to sex at your place or hers. And what I would do at this particular point, because you've hung out enough, invite her over to your place to make dinner together for the next two to three times in a row. You've been dating her for two months. I mean, think about it. She's treating you like a second-class citizen at work, like she's almost embarrassed to let anybody know that you guys are dating. And she's worried about other people thinking that she's a hoe. Well, obviously she's flirting with other guys and wants to keep her options open. That's what's really going on. Why? Why would she do that? Because she's not that into you yet. After seeing, and now listen to what he says, after seeing how awesome I am, she was hoping if we didn't work out that we could still be friend. Oh, golly gee, Wally, that is just fucking swell. So next time you hear her use the F word with you, say, look, don't ever bring the friendship word up in the same sentence when you're talking about you or I because I am not interested in being friends, period. I have no interest in anything platonic. My interest is strictly romantic. And if you want something platonic, we're not going to be hanging out. We can be colleagues at work, but that's it. I'm interested in romance. So I don't want to hear any of this crap about us being friends. If we don't work out, we're not going to be friends. We're going to strictly be work colleagues and that's it. That's how I feel. I can't be hanging out with you as buddies. And we're going to swap dating stories. It's like, I don't think so. That's not what I'm looking for. And the reason that she's trying to do this is because you've displayed so much weakness that she's because you've acted so much like guys that she normally friend zones. That's why she, you know, she brings these up because she's been through this several times with other guys. So what you need to do is nothing. She needs to do 100% of the calling, texting, and pursuing at this point and you need to be making dates and not be sitting there for hours on end every night and every day being her emotional tampon. If she's reaching out, assume she wants to see you and you make a date. If she calls you up, hey, what are you doing? Come on over. Invite her over. Make dinner together. Hang out, have fun, hook up. But what's happening is you're getting to the point where because you really like this girl and you're being extra nice to her that you're behaving like a friend all of the time. Because guys who are busy, guys who have choices with women, they're not going to sit there on the phone for an hour every single night when they're not getting laid. 
I mean, think about it. You're acting like a friend. So you're sending mixed signals. Sometimes you're acting like the lover when you go for the grab bag. And other times, most of the time when you interact with her, you're interacting with her like a friend. Therefore, if you want to be your lover, act like her lover. If you want to be your friend, then act like her friend. It's one or the other. There's no middle of the road. Make dates, hang out, have fun, hook up. But you need to read the book, dude. You need to learn the seduction process because the you know the way you're going about it, just grabbing the crotch or grabbing the boobs, you're going to get rejected every time. You just that makes that communicates you have no clue what you're doing in the bedroom. Why would a woman want to have sex with a guy who has absolutely no clue like that? It's turning her off, dude. Learn the fundamentals; it'll get way easier for you. I promise. And if you'd like to get my help personally, the quickest way is to go to my website, click the products tab at the top of your screen, and just follow the instructions for booking whichever option, coaching-wise, works best for you. And I will talk to you soon.